Good morning, and welcome to this worship on Wednesday. We are glad you're here. Uh, this is our morning meditation. Um, once more, uh, I invite those that uh, might be on campus this afternoon uh, to stop by at uh, noon and uh, enjoy a lunch, grab and go box lunch, and uh, have the opportunity to perhaps take it either back to your residence or maybe just find a place here on our beautiful uh, plaza and uh, sit and enjoy the the breeze and uh, enjoy the company of being in the presence of this beautiful university and uh, and all those who care for you. Well, let's open with a prayer, shall we? Well, Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for uh, all you have done for us, everything. We give you thanks that uh, you are our God, that we worship you, which pulls us and draws us outside of ourselves. It is only you, the transcendent one, that can guide our lives. We thank you for that that we are not dependent upon our own guidance, but we are dependent upon, obedient to, submit to yours. Be with us during this time of meditation upon your word, that uh, your word would speak to us this day. It is in the name of our Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, I wanted to take a moment and, and walk through another psalm. It's uh, been enjoyable, I hope for you, but it's been terribly enjoyable for me to uh, to actually uh, move through psalms uh, during this uh, uh, pandemic time, um, and particularly in, during this time in our nation, um, as we hear a cacophony of voices, as we hear a great deal of chaos, as we hear unkindness and words that... Um, uh, exp uh, that demean others. It seems to me that uh, one of the ways that we might move past that and actually stay grounded in the midst of this is actually to lay ourselves within the loving and uh, hands of our Lord and His living Word. Well, let's look at Psalm 24. It's a psalm of joy. It's a psalm which... Uh, some suggest um, marks uh, a remembrance of the entry of the Ark of the Lord or the Ark of the Covenant uh, into Jerusalem brought in by David. Um, and so the echoes are through that uh, as it talks about the, 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 the uh, uh, presence of the Lord being brought in and uh, the calling out to open the gates of of Jerusalem and to move forward so that this uh, presence of God may be right in our midst. Um, so to me, it is a joyful psalm that causes us to look beyond ourselves. And that to me is critically important right now. Let's read the psalm and then take a moment to, uh, to reflect upon it. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and those who dwell within. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, and does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of God, of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them up, O ancient doors that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? 
the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. This is God's word to us this day. Uh, let's start with actually the verses 7 through 10. It gives us it gives us the opportunity to um, realize that this is a, a psalm used within a liturgical procession uh, into the temple um, uh, for a festival, more than likely celebrating the entry of the ark into Jerusalem. Um, it is one that, for me, also reminds us as, as uh, the faithful stand at the uh, at the gate, as they cry out to the gate being open, as uh, to remember David bringing uh, the ark in, that there is a litany in verses seven through ten. It is a question and answer, a statement, a question, and an answer. And it is also, as we think about it, for me, and and again, this is my take upon this. That as those uh, that call is uh, to folks to lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of Glory may come in. It is also a call for us to lift up our hearts, to lift up that in which we close off the presence of the Lord, to lift it up, to allow it to come fully in. And then the question is, who is this king of glory that we call in, that we wish to bring in? It's the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. And again, once more, lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Again, the question, who is the king of glory? And the antiphonal response, the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. Well, that's where we end in this psalm today, but let's move back to, to have the sense of those, those, those final uh, uh, refrains uh, here. So begin again, the opening words are magnificent. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein, for he is established upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. What a sweeping statement. It's a statement we need to hear today, not only in our country, but in our world. It is a statement to realize that we are not the, uh, the one, but we are the one who serves the one. It's uh, important to, to extricate ourselves from the identity of the one in the sense of us being the one of the self being the one, as the self being the emotive center of the universe. This psalm calls us to say, no. It calls us back to say, there is only one that is at the center of life. And it's not self, but it's God, the Holy One. It is the one, as the psalmist says, that the, where the earth uh, has been made by this creator God, and where it's the, f the fullness of God's creative work. And it is that creative work that, that, that in which we dwell, in which we as God's people dwell, that we live, that we live within as, a, as the subject of, to this incredible being of God. And he, and he speaks about this, uh, the, the power and magnificence of this creative work in uh, verse 2 where he says for the psalmist as he writes, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the river. It calls us back to Genesis 1-2 where it speaks about the Spirit of God as, as the, 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 the Word speaks everything into creation. The Spirit of God is the one that's hovering over the waters prior to that, the first call in uh, the first creative work. And again, it, 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 this psalm takes us back to the foundations. 
the foundations of who created all of this. This incredible divine being, this transcendent one, the one who founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers, established it upon that chaos within the swirling seas. He brought it into life. As we remember that, and we remember the magnificence, the psalm then moves us toward where we shall worship God. So we have this joy that we're called to lift up your hearts, uh, know that the earth has been created by God, and now go worship him. And this is this movement, this beautiful movement in a psalm. Go worship him. And it's a question, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place as we, as his creature, creation? How will we worship him? What, what does it, what is um, uh, 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 prescribed for us? I mean, how, how do we do that? Knowing that we are his and that we are not ourselves, that he is grander and greater than we are. And the psalmist says, uh, in asking this question, he responds. He says, the one who will be able to stand in the holy place, the one who will be able to go in this procession to the ark, into the temple, uh, the, to, to Jerusalem, uh, will be the one who has clean hands. Now, it's not so much the purity here. It's talking about the innocence. One who has not lifted a hand in malice towards someone else. One that has uh, a pure heart, a heart of kindness, not a heart of self, not a heart of cruelty, not a heart of sarcasm, not a heart of demeaning, but a heart that is one who lives in humility for the Lord. One who does not lift up his soul to what is false. It's an interesting phrase that we don't lift up our soul to what is false. And we don't lift up ourselves to what our desires are, to what is in us, where we emotively believe we define what life is. When in actuality, it is God who defines that for us and that we are subject to his definition that draws us out of ourselves so that we do not swear deceitfully, so that we do not bear to that which is false, bear witness to self as if it is the ruling identity for the one who will receive blessing from the Lord and will be the one that acknowledges the Lord acknowledges his great, grand, creative presence surrounding us in which we live and we move as Paul, as Paul quotes uh, the ph uh, philosopher in uh, Athens where we live and we move and we have our being. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. He will receive the gift. It is a gift once, once there is that acknowledgement of whose we are. And as we live without malice toward each other, as we live with kindness toward each other, we receive this gift. And it's a gift of rightness with the Lord. It is a gift of uh, blessing. Um, it, it is a gift from the one who is holy. He says, such is the generation of those who seek him. He calls us out of ourselves to be the ones to seek him, to seek him in his wholeness, in his creative work, in his profound redemptive love, and to move beyond ourselves. 
those who seek the face of God, of Jacob, the God of Israel, the God of hope, the God of covenant, the God of blessing. And then the final refrain again, lift up your heads, O gates, lift up your hearts, O people. Be lifted up, O ancient doors, open your heart wide, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? Well, it is the Lord strong and mighty. There is a powerful presence of which we can only uh, in a small way comprehend. We do not make God God. God makes us. We have a very finite view to this immense, strong, mighty, redeeming God. He's mighty in overcoming all the ill upon his creation. He's mighty to protect his people. And again, lift up your lift up your heads, O gate, lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. May we allow our hearts this day to lift up, to open themselves to that presence of the Lord being brought into Jerusalem, the presence of the Lord of the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of the Lord of the mercy seat to reside in our hearts because he is the King of glory. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the one that is over the sun and the moon and the stars, the angels, uh, all of the uh, heavenly beings. He is the one over the entirety of of this cosmos because he's the one that put it into place and he is the one that opens his arms to us today may we be joyful this day and may we open our hearts as those gates were open that the lord may truly come in let us pray oh lord we do open our hearts to you in this midst of uncertainty and turmoil in our world we find that the grounding in our lives is not in the chaos the grounding in our lives is your presence within us your presence of holiness your presence cleansing our hearts your presence calling us to live without malice, calling us to live with kindness, calling us to realize that we are together your creatures. Lord, we give you thanks and we sing with joy for that knowledge, the knowledge of knowing that you are in charge and we are not. May we bow before you. May we bend knee. May we sing your praise. May we know your redemptive work. We thank you, Lord, for calling us this day to open the gate of our heart so you might enter in. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I wish you a great day. I wish you to live in joy. I wish you to enjoy the hospitality of the chapel. Come join us for a lunch if you're on campus. We'd love to see you. Take care. The Lord bless you this day.